Survive in advance. The Buffalo Bills take down the Pittsburgh Steelers 31-17 to this week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. We are brought to you by 26 Shirts. Uh, If you've been listening to the show, we've been talking about them for a while. Make sure you're checking out 26 Shirts. Uh, Just awesome designs. They're doing great work in the community. You get the best of both worlds. We did it. Uh, Took down the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wild card uh, matchup. Bills beat them 31 to 17. And this was a game that went, I guess, for the most part about um, how I thought it might go. Um, I didn't expect this to be really a blowout and and the score kind of makes it look like it was a bigger like margin than it actually was. Um, got a touchdown late, but it was, it was a pretty close game for, for a good part of it. Um, so for the most part, I, I felt like this was going to be a pretty close game. I was expecting the weather to be a little bit more of a factor. I wasn't expecting them to play in, you know, the ridiculous snowstorm. Uh, just seeing some videos of of the stadium while the storm was going on. I mean, it wouldn't have been watchable on TV. Um, but I was expecting it to be a little bit more of a factor. Um, maybe maybe a bit more on the ground for, for really both teams. Um, but it ended up kind of playing out like a pretty, pretty normal game. Uh, there was a lot of things that I liked in this game and a few things that I didn't like, and I'm gonna start with the things that I didn't like in this game. Um, for starters, the field goal, um, the whole field goal operation uh, just wasn't great today. Obviously, the blocks kick in the first half that you know goes all the way down the field Sam Martin gets hurt on the play. It sets the Steelers up for a touchdown and kind of gave them life right before the half um, versus, you know, really burying them going into the half. Um, And then when we get to the end of the game, you know, the Bills sustain a pretty long drive. They're killing clock, running the ball. And it's kind of, you know, it's a, it was, Let's get this one more score to, you know, really put it out of reach. And then we missed the field goal. Um, So I don't know about you guys, but sitting on my couch, knowing how many times things like this has happened to us, just that door being even a little bit open, it it just makes me shit my pants on the couch. We've been burned by it so many times. Um, There was still like three and a half minutes left or something like that. And it was three score game and I'm I'm still over here <laughs> uncomfortable. Um so yeah, pretty much the f- I'm going to put it on the whole field goal operation. Um uh, it's been pretty consistent throughout the year we have seen um there was an- another blocked kicker two this year. Um something that really needs to make sure it's cleaned up going forward in the playoffs because there's a very real chance that one of these games comes down to a game winning field goal or a field goal in a huge moment. And that's just not what you want to see. I mean, it, it's obviously more fun to have like a walk off touchdown, anything like that. But a lot of these games do come down to um, kicking a field goal to wrap up the game. So something to keep an eye on there. The other thing I really have to say that I did not like in this game was the injuries uh i mean outside of that i was pretty pretty pleased with the game but these injuries are just continuing to pile up and not that i like have any real preference on injuries but like they're all happening on the defensive side of the ball (laughs) like i'm i'm glad our offense is healthy i hope they stay that way i'm knocking on wood all that but like how many more players can go down on this defense? And like, I I gotta give credit to McDermott here because, you know, I was kind of piling on him when the Bills were all the way back at six and six. There's the talks of, you know, should he make it past this season? 
when I'm sitting here looking now at what he's been able to do with this defense, there are some, you know, bad defensive blunders throughout this season that, that were really frustrating. But seeing where he's at now and still putting like a respectable defense on the field with just this bevy of injuries, um, I think he deserves some credit there. And what's really frustrating about these injuries for me is it's not like, you know, these were all things that we've been dealing with for like the last six weeks. Like everybody's used to playing in these spots, blah, blah, blah. It was like, Hey, all these teams are getting banged up right before the playoffs and like the bills are finally getting healthy. And like, we, we had a lot of key pieces, but we were still missing some people. But for the most part, the team was getting healthy, headed into the playoffs. They're getting hot at the right time. They're getting healthy at the right time. And then this game just happened. And it, it, it's, uh, I don't know the extent of these injuries yet. We'll have to wait and see more information. Um, but in this game we have. For starters, we have Terrell Dotson already not playing this game, who is already not the preferred starter because Matt Milano got hurt. Um, so Bale Inspector is replacing him. Uh, he gets hurt. You know, we we end up with Doreen Williams and AJ Klein out there. And AJ Klein was just signed to the practice squad like four days ago <laughs> and elevated for this game. I mean, granted, he's been in and out of this building forever uh i think bruce nolan over from the bruce exclusive i don't know if i'm giving the right one here somebody had the uh the flex tape meme of just aj klein being that that uh break clay break glass in case of emergency kind of guy it's just always been like oh we got an injury at linebacker what's aj klein up to bring him in and you know he knows the system he played all right out there and we were able to survive this game but looking at some of the other injuries um Christian Benford goes out of this game. Um, we saw Kyrie Elam in there. We already had Razul Douglas out for this game. So you're on, you're like fourth and fifth cornerbacks, you know, from what you wanted to be. Uh, granted, Dane Jackson, much like last week, he made some plays down the stretch. Um, Elam had the grabbiness early, did come away with an interception, almost came away with a second. Uh, that would have been a pretty sweet redemption game for him. Uh, but I, I feel like that's how Elam looked on the stretch last year of like, he was grabby, he was getting flags, but then he would make a big play. Um, so who knows, maybe depending on what's happening, maybe he gets a little run here. Um, but just some of the other injuries. Oh, Terrell Bernard. Absolutely devastating. Um, this dude, you know, a lot of people didn't know what the plan was at middle linebacker. He let Tremaine Edmonds walk. Nobody had really seen Bernard play a ton of snaps. And then he, he's playing at an all pro level um, the whole season. And his looked like to me, probably, probably the most serious injury that looked like a pretty bad ankle. I mean, even if, if I'm not going to speculate on this too much, I'm not a doctor, but at the very least, to me, it looked like a, a pretty bad sprain, and, and you're missing some time with that. Um, I honestly don't even know if I hit all the injuries. Um, probably not. Micah Hyde was limping out there. Um, McGovern was out for a little bit. Stefan Diggs was out for a little bit. I, I mean, there there's just so many injuries piling up. But in particular, on that defensive side of the ball, uh, we're keeping together with duct tape, so... Um, Pittsburgh's not really known for having a, a very dynamic offense. Um, it's going to be interesting seeing what some of these injuries look like um, going forward into the playoffs. My hope here is that maybe a couple of these guys were pretty close to going um, and just weren't able. To, they were close, but they wanted to give it one more week. Another player went out today, Taron Johnson. That's who I wanted to talk about. Um, we got Cam Lewis, you know, in there playing slot. Um, Taylor Raps out. We have DeMar Hamlin in. I mean, we had so many backups in on defense. Like I said, I'm I'm hoping that some of those players that we were replacing this week, the Dotson, the Rapp, um, Razul Douglas, I'm hoping they were really close for this game. 
and they're able to come back next week and it's kind of like swapping out the injured players like it's like some sort of pit stop we're just rotating guys in because there's so many injuries um but it's kind of the name of the game this time of year in the nfl it's you know no team is without their injuries no team isn't like missing somebody that they'd love to have in there right now um that's that's why the cliche is out there survive in advance i mean it wasn't always pretty in this game at times the injuries are terrible but end of the day took care of business um we're on to the second round against the chiefs at home um gonna take a quick break when i come back i'm going to talk about some of the things i liked from the game uh, and then just look forward to the chiefs game stick around hey this is bill's vader now back to the show Welcome back in, and thank you again for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast. If you've made it this far, um, do me a favor, hit, hit the like, share, subscribe button, all those good things. We've got episodes coming out every week. Uh, you hitting those buttons really does help us um, get this content out to more people, make us keep doing it. Um, so we appreciate you doing that. Want to talk about some of the good things from the game. First half, we're talking about things I didn't like from the game and honestly there wasn't a ton of it um I thought this was a nice balanced game for the Bills um kind of already talked about the defense and what they were able to do um I was pleased with their ability to stop the run today I mean two very effective running backs this year um and Jalen Warren and Najee Harris uh Jalen Warren Eight carries, 38 yards. Najee Harris, 12 carries for 37 yards. I'll, I'll take that all day um, against a team that likes to run the ball. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, I feel like there's not really any crazy numbers that are popping out here. But like as a whole, you know, it, it, it was a good team effort. Um, there was a nice balanced approach to the run game, to the pass game. And obviously... Josh Allen was a fucking stallion in this game. Um, 21 for 30 for 203 yards. Like, yeah, that's not not a crazy stat line there. Um, he also threw for three touchdowns. Uh, he ran for a touchdown, which was a 52-yard just runaway freight train. Um, <laughs> one of the most fun, fun runs I've, I've seen from a quarterback let alone running back like whatever like that was ridiculous um Khalil Shakir also had the ridiculous one towards the end of the game I, it looked like he was going to be stopped for like a four yard four yard gain and I was like oh sweet he's going to get pretty close to the first down oh he got the first oh sh he got a touchdown um that was just crazy yards after catch for him um a guy that continues to be electric and make plays when he has the ball in his hands um and remains super efficient uh three three catches on three targets uh, i mean the the ball doesn't hit the ground when it's thrown to shakir and maybe that's a little bit of a product of you know him being deprioritized with the other weapons cool whatever uh he's he's shown that he has the ability to create after the catch He's shown the ability to get open and he's really coming alive down the stretch here and you know not not a crazy amount of targets not a crazy amount of yards um but when you're watching the game and you you see that touchdown you see him run for the first down um he's got that juice and we don't have a we don't get a ton of we don't get a ton of yak yards on this team and he's bringing that so that's super super fun to see um, Kincaid having another week where he's leading the team in um, yardage. Again, not a crazy week for anybody, but he had three catches for 59 yards um, and a touchdown. He was pretty damn close to having like another 30 yards and another touchdown. Um, he had a route going like right to the pylon and it looked like it was just a hair behind him that allowed the the linebacker to get back into the play and break it up um but another player he's been really he's been consistent throughout the whole year right but 
um, just making his impact felt down the stretch. Um, did have a couple of drops in there. Um, I mentioned the one that was to the pylon. I think that would have been a really tough catch to finish, but he did have one kind of pop him right in the hands um, earlier in the game that, that would have gone for a first down. I believe we ended up punting. Um, I think it's good to see Knox still involved in the passing game despite having Kincaid. And this is kind of like the role that I love for Knox. Um, he had a, he had a drop in this game too. I believe that was right out of half. Um, but ends up with one catch for nine yards and a touchdown. Um, Knox and Allen have had like ridiculous chemistry in particular, like in the red zone. Um, Knox has been able to put together a lot of catches for touchdowns and you know there's there's so much talk about like do we need Knox now that we have Kincaid like I'm good with keeping Knox around first of all his contract is pretty ridiculous to move um, any way you cut it but I'm all for you know running a two tight end set and him being like the defense's fourth concern and how much chemistry him and Josh already have, how many touchdowns they already put up together. Um, we've seen him run like triple option plays where he blocks and leaks out. Um, for what the rest of the team is doing here in the passing game, if you if you give me one catch for nine yards from, from Knox every week and it's a touchdown, I'm good with that. Um, I think part of what became so frustrating with Knox is he didn't have the best hands in the world and it looked like it was kind of going away. Um, popped its head up a couple earlier this year. I mean, granted he had, you know, the wrist injury, who knows how much that played into it. Um, I don't need Knox to be a volume guy in this offense. We, we have Diggs, we have Kincaid, uh, Shakir stepping up. James Cook is involved in the passing game, the running backs in general. If, if Knox is kind of an afterthought in this offense and, you know, we can take what he does as a blocker and occasionally get him involved in the passing game, I'm good with that. Um, do I wish it costs a little less money? Sure. Uh, but he's still providing value to the team. Um, and then Diggs again. Another week that we didn't really see a monster game from Diggs and... What we've seen for the last like two, three weeks, I'm I'm good with this too. If the team is moving and winning, um, I think it was super fun watching Diggs in the beginning of the year. You know, hundred yards every game, touchdown or two, like that's great. Um, but it was really one of the problems with the offense is it, it was Diggs and who else? Um, seven catches on nine targets today for 52 yards. Uh, like I said, it's not a crazy day, but when you have all these other people contributing, you know, just looking at how many people caught passes from Josh Allen today, like, that's awesome. Because whatever, the defense wants to really know that they want to take digs away from the equation. Okay, we have six, seven other guys that made contributions today. Um, and like a few of them that were very meaningful contributions. So I think that's kind of like, this balance that we've been looking for in the offense. And like, for me, I always have to kind of check myself because it, it's like, you get so used to these like electric hundred yard games from digs. You're seeing it every week. And like, you see a 50 yard stat line, you're like, oh, what's wrong here? Um, I think within the, the, the construct of the offense today, he had a good day. Um, I think that is one of the things about this game too, is we had a little kind of lull there where the Steelers were kind of able to get back into the game a little bit. Um, we've seen this so many times from this team. I went from like being super cushy, chilling on the couch to like, I, I was starting to feel stressed out again. I, I've had this killer headache all day. I, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like dealing with a stressful game. Um, and all of a sudden it's a one score game and here we go again, the injuries are piling up and, and we got a ball game on our hands. Um, but what I what I did like today is 
we did kind of seem to have that little spot where there was a lull. There wasn't, you know, urgency. It seemed like there was trying to uh, be some like clock management. But when the game got close again, they came out swinging and, you know, Steelers made it a one score game. We get the ball back and it's a shot play down the field to Kincaid that draws a holding call, a uh, five yard penalty, first down. And it just seemed like kind of the Bills got punched and our offense went out there and actually punched back. <laughs> There's been so many times this year where, you know, the defense lets one up to get it close late after having a great game all day. And then our offense comes in three and out and, you know, all the momentum shifts to the, to the other team. Um, they came out swinging, put together a drive of their own and, you know, put this game back out of reach pretty quickly. So overall, uh, I think a lot to like from this game. I think one of the things that I would say I like the most about this game is kind of like the the playing within themselves and taking what the defense was given and, you know, working for some of the bigger plays here and there. Um, but this isn't a game where, you know, Josh Allen threw for 400 yards. You know, we, we see him so often, you know, between running and passing, put up like 350 yards. I mean, between the two, he didn't put up 300 today. And that was absolutely fine. It got the job done and did a really good job of not putting the ball in harm's way in this game. And I, I think for this team that we have, the biggest thing that we've had to overcome all year is playing smart football and protecting the ball. There's been so many games that, you know, we win a close one or we lose a close one. And it was, you know, an interception and two fumbles or two interceptions and a fumble. And, and you just don't overcome those things in the NFL very often, um, let alone in the playoffs. Um, so, like I said, not not the sexiest stat line you'll ever see, but it was good, smart football. I thought uh, Joe Brady called a good game today. It wasn't like, you know, he was in his bag calling up you know, these super crazy, never been seen before plays. I think he just had uh, a good pulse on, on the run pass balance. Um, they kept talking about it on the broadcast, uh, how they were getting their run looks when Hayward is on the sideline. Like, that's awesome. They're like, play, play against, use the defensive strengths against them. And uh, they had a lot of success in the ground. Um, James Cook, you know, not one of these crazy days that we've seen from, from him recently, but still averaged over four yards of carry on 18 attempts. And, you know, all of a sudden between him and Josh Allen, you had, well, hell, put Ty Johnson in there too, because he had some good scampers at the end of the game. You put the three of them together and you had a 200 yard game on the ground without really feeling like you were forcing the run all that much. Uh, I think it leads to some pretty pretty great balance and you end up having a few more run plays than pass plays like whatever that was you you have a few minutes you know killing the clock but to get them to the spot where they're really trying to milk out the clock i thought the balance was like that perfect 60 40 and it it's not just like the numbers and the percentage of we have to run 40 percent and pass 60 percent. it was the timing of it and and it felt like Joe Joe Brady was pulling the right levers in this game. Um so super encouraged to see another week of the offense kind of looking like they're back on track. Um looking like they can take over a game and and be that offense that we thought all year that we'd be able to lean on. There were so many times this year that we were actually leaning on the defense when we had all the injuries on defense and the offense just wasn't clicking. Uh, the offense is finally clicking and it's a beautiful time for that because Kansas City's coming up. They have a very good defense. Their offense isn't what we're used to seeing, uh, but a really great running back in Pacheco. Uh, Rasheed Rice has really emerged um, as a receiver for them. He's making plays. And of course, a guy named Patrick Mahomes, you know, Andy Reid. The amount of success that they've had together. Um, like I said, this this isn't the same Chiefs 
team that we've seen over the past like five years. Um, they definitely look a little bit like a, a little bit down uh, for what we're used to. That's still a super dangerous team. And this is going to be a hell of a matchup. Super psyched that they have to come out here to high mark. Um, we've played them five times in the past, like I think it was five times in the past five years, something like that. Um, all of the games have been at Arrowhead, um, which is, you know, notoriously one of the more difficult stadiums to play in in the league. Another one that's one of the most difficult stadiums to play in in the league is right here in Buffalo. Uh, so just going from that supreme advantage that they've had so many times to them having to come to our house, um, that's just super exciting. And I feel like the Chiefs are kind of the, that monkey on our back. It reminds me of all the years that Peyton Manning was with the Colts and Brady was over there with the Patriots and Peyton Manning was this phenomenal first ballot Hall of Fame quarterback. Keeps getting knocked out of playoffs by Tom Brady. And I, I feel like Mahomes has been that for us so far. Mahomes read the Chiefs. And I think this is... This is the prove it game. This is get the monkey off your back right here. Go out there, handle your business, move on, survive in advance. Um, it's all I really got from this game. Just want to keep an eye on the injuries this week. See exactly what we're dealing with, who we're going to have out there. Um, might be seeing some roster call-ups from guys you don't typically see. Maybe we see uh, Jamarcus Ingram <laughs> suiting up. I, I, Got to see where we can go, especially in the secondary there. Um, but hey, at least the game wasn't postponed, so it's now a short week for us to get healthy on, right? Uh, we'll see what happens. But that's going to be it for tonight's episode. Thank you again for joining me on this week's episode. Enjoy the win. Um, and we'll see you this time next week. Go Bills. Go Bills.